Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel Iris Budgets. If you're new here, I make cash stuffing videos, I complete or try to complete savings challenges and in today's video I'm actually going to show you how I make one of my savings binders which are available on my Etsy shop. So if that is something that you're interested in, please stay tuned. Okay guys, so first of all I'm going to show you what you will need to make one of these binders. So first things first, you're going to need some laminating pouches. I use two different kinds. For the inserts, I use 150 macrons or microns, and for the outside of the pouch, I use 250 microns, so they're the more sturdy ones. Um, you would also need um, a cutter, basically a vinyl cutter. I use the Cricut, I think this is the Explore Air 2, so that's the one I use. And you'll also need the mat, but that comes with it. You'd need some vinyl and some transfer tape and some tools that um, are bought separately. So that tool there is used um, basically to cut out the vinyl when it cuts, which I'll show you later. Um, a hole punch, some of the um, binder clips, some treasury tags, a paper cutter and a laminating machine. Okay everyone, so first things first, we're gonna cut out the insert that'll go inside of the pouch. So what I try to do is cut like just a few sheets at a time, um, which just saves me some time. Now then, the measurements, sorry, the measurements that I use um, are 8.3 centimeters. So I'll just cut a few first. So 8.3 by 17. So 8.3 by 17. And this insert it is what allows the pouch basically to open and to make it a little bit more sturdy. And the only real waste to have out of one laminating sheet is this. Okay, so I'll cut a little bit more. Okay guys, so I cut off quite a few more off camera. So I now have a stack of the inserts here and I'm just gonna put these to one side. And then the next step is to cut the outside of the wallet, which, like I said earlier, I use much thicker laminating pouches. So these are the 250 microns and I cut just two of these at a time. And the measurements I use for the outsides are I cut the bottom off at 12 centimeters. And then I cut this basically in half and half for me measures at just under 11. Okay, so then these, I have one, two, three, four, five, six at, um, per two. So again, it's pretty much three per laminating sheet. So I use two per wallet, um, if that makes sense. No, it doesn't. So I use, um, out, of, out of one laminating pouch, in each of the um, thicknesses, I'll get three, three, three envelopes. Yeah, okay, so I'll cut some more. Okay, so here's what we're left with. We've got the insert and then we've got the outside. And then what I do next is I take the insert, um, if you can see it here, and I basically put it so that the two shiny sides because you've got a matte inside and a shiny outside are together. So basically the shiny sides stick together. And then what I do is take um, one of the outside ones and this can be a bit tricky to take them apart, especially the thicker ones. Open it up and then I just line up the insert. So it's right touching the line at the top there because that's the closed end. 
and then I just line it up so that the insert is just touching the outside line, if you can see that. There, so the insert is just touching that outside line and that is that one done. So I'll do another one just to show you. So again, take the insert and then you're going to basically do this so that it's just the matte on the outside and the shiny surfaces are together. Take one of the outside pieces and then insert it so that it's as close to that line at the top as possible. And then you're gonna line up so that it's just touching that line. And then when it goes through the laminator, invariably this part is already open so you don't need a cut on the edge there. Okay, so I'll make a few more. I'll just zoom out a bit. Now, when I come to use one of the larger pieces, which was the end of the laminating pouch, what I do um, is open it out so it's like that. And it's the same premise really, so do that and then just try and line it up as best as possible to the edge. I mean, you could cut this off, so it's fine, but it just saves a bit of a job later on. So just try and line it up. As best you can. This one doesn't want, want to play. And then put this on top. And just be careful when you're putting these in the laminator later because it really prefers closed edges. So just make sure this is as closed as possible when it goes through. Otherwise, you'll ruin laminators, which I've learned. Okay, I'll make a couple more. Now then when you have your um, laminated pouches prepared and ready to go, it's time to put them in the laminator. This is the one that I use. This is number two. Um, I had another fellows one which broke on me this week. Um, so this is the one that I purchased yesterday. So basically um, closed edge first and shove it through. And when you get to these larger ones, just make sure that this, like I say, is as closed as it could possibly be because this technically isn't a closed edge. And as you can see with this first one, this pocket is already open because I lined up the insert so close to the top there, so I don't need to cut that. And then as far as um, Etsy goes, I'm going to show you guys a few things that I made for my Etsy shop. So I decided to... So that gives it 20, 40, and 60. so far this year absolutely amazing so we are killing it this year we're halfway through the year and that's how much we have paid off like we are hitting it hard so okay guys so we have our cash envelopes here there's 35 and i'm going to uh, make a 1k today that seems to be the most popular so hopefully someone will buy this um so there's our envelopes there's a, a couple of more things we need to laminate and that is a front cover which is where the um, 1K, like the vinyl cover goes on. So what I do here is I use a larger um, outside envelope, but I just make it so that the insert is like a little bit lower so that I can give it a border. Cause this, this isn't gonna open up for cash to go in it. It's just a front cover, but I also wanna make it quite thick. Um, 
like the other wallets or the other envelopes. So I'm just gonna make sure it's lined up. There we go. All right, so we're gonna laminate that one. And then also in my designs, I have um, a tracker at the front and I have a back cover. So I've just printed these off. Um, and again, this is going to go in. So always need to make sure that we leave a gap on one end, which is where it gets hole punched um, to fit into your binder or to fit onto the clips for this savings binder. So this is the outside part, which is, so that's what shows through the um, front cover. And then this is the tracker um, for the one case. So we're gonna, when this is finished, laminate that. And then exactly the same for the back cover. So that's gonna go like that. Again, leaving a gap, which will be hole punched. Okay, so we're done with the laminator now and it's time to trim off the edges of all of our envelopes. So this is the front cover. So all I really need to do is take the edges off. Now then for the hole punch, what I like to do, so I use this Furbon paper cutter and I just line up where the insert ends to where the first squares start and that's where I trim. So it's just really easy for me um, to eyeball it cut that side off and then the top we don't want to cut through this insert remember because this is the front cover so that's that one all trimmed that's our front cover and then now for the back cover so again we're just trimming along the sides leaving the same length for the hole punch trim this side and again, as this is a back cover, we're gonna go just above that bubble where the laminator has sealed. That's our back cover. And then for the tracker page, again, we're taking off the ends <clears throat> where it needs to be punched. The bottom. And the side okay so then that's part of the front cover and then for our pouches so we just want to trim off the end trim off you know for the bottom and then just make sure it's open and that one is open as you can see I hope I'm in focus sorry and in, in shot um, so we'll do another one so we'll trim off the end open and trim that off there we go I don't know if these were in shot before but they're the front cover back cover and for the vinyl so we'll do a few more these are the larger ones where we use the bottom of the laminated pouch laminating pouch So two ends really need to be cut off. And again, that one's open. There are sometimes a couple that where I haven't lined it up properly and it doesn't open at the top. So I do need to then slice a little bit off. Um, these, are, these are obviously handmade. They're not perfect. This isn't like, I'm not a professional. <laughs> I've just learned by watching other people's videos. See, that one's not open. So I shall just trim off a tiny bit at the top and then there it opens. So yeah, these aren't perfect. Um, I do my best. <laughs> but they've sold really well so far, so Hopefully those who have purchased have been happy um, with their purchase. But I just thought um, 
I've been thinking about it for a while, just doing a bit of a video to show like how I make one. Um, and then I saw At Home in the Sun, she did a video like not long ago where she showed how she makes her laminated pouches. And she um, she's much cleverer than I am because she puts like pressed flowers and things in here, which is just, they look unbelievable. Like check her out if you don't follow her. At Home in the Sun. Um, on YouTube. I think she's got a shop as well. I think. See that one? Oh no, it is. So sometimes they're like half open, so I basically just do a very quick, you know, forcing it open. Hey everyone, so we have now fully trimmed all of our envelopes, and the next step is to cut the vinyl that's going to be used as numbers on each of the envelopes and for the front cover. So this here is Cricut Design Space. You might not be able to see very well. Um, so Cricut Design Space, this is um, the design here. So this tells me that I need a vinyl strip that's 30 centimeters by around six centimeters. So I've already pre-cut this slice of vinyl and this is how much I use per binder. Um, so the next things to do is Go ahead and, well, first of all, turn the machine on. <laughs> um, so that'll just find the cricket. It's quite noisy. Um, it just uses Bluetooth, which is class. So it finds my um, cricket. And then what I need to do next is set the material. Now, I had so much trouble with this when I first bought this cricket. I've wasted so much vinyl because I didn't have the cutter um, as... Um, so, hang on, I'll, yeah, the pressure of the cutter wasn't strong enough, so basically the numbers weren't coming off, um, and I still have trouble with them, which you might see. So anyway, I've set it to premium vinyl, and then I always make sure that the pressure is more. Um, so that's now ready to go, and so we'll bring in the Cricut. So what I need to do first is just put the vinyl on the Cricut mat. Um, so I just press it down so that it's lined up. And then it's really, really important to make sure that this is stuck down really well. Otherwise, it doesn't basically doesn't cut properly. So I probably need to buy a proper roller because all I've really got is this thing here and it's already a little bit damaged. Um, so I basically just use it to press down this vinyl as much as possible. Just making sure I don't use that damaged part. So this just gets out any air gaps and ensures that the cutter can use as much pressure as possible. There we go. Okay, now we'll bring the machine in. Okay guys, so here's our machine. So we just need to get it set and then press go. Okay guys, so that is our vinyl cut. So I'm just gonna carefully peel this off the mat. And then what I like to do um, is use the tool, being careful with it, because I need a new one, to just press down a little bit. Because um, honestly, the so there, I mean, that's fine because it's a negative part that's come off there, but it's really tricky to get these numbers out. Looking good. That's another negative part. Okay, so next we're going to peel off the edge. Okay. 
okay, that wasn't too bad, actually. Honestly, the number of times I've found, like, bits of numbers stuck to my clothes <laughs> later in the day is ridiculous. Um, okay, so that is our numbers cut out. So the next thing I'm going to do is use this tool to basically take out the negative parts of the numbers. Um, and this part is quite tricky as well. Okay, so that is all of our negative parts um, cut out and it's time now to bring back the envelopes and to basically pop the numbers onto the envelopes and the front cover. Okay, so for the numbers, I like to use the strong grit transfer tape um, from Cricut um, only because it picks up these numbers really quite easily. I say that and now it's not going to happen, is it? Sometimes it just needs a little bit of persuasion and then it'll come off. And then I line up this envelope and just put it to the bottom of four squares and then use the tool just to give it. And then there's that's one done. And then moving on to the next one. Now this <clears throat> strong grip transfer tape is so good that I've used the same tiny piece for all of the numbers on here. So really, you don't need to use that much of it at all, which I think is brilliant. Okay, so that is all of our numbers done on the envelopes. And next up, it's time to do the front cover. Okay, guys, for, so for the front cover, I just use the normal transfer tape. Um, I find the strong grip is just too strong, really, for this. It doesn't really need it. Um, so I've just cut, cut the end of that piece off. And I just then pop the transfer tape on top of here. Um, and just make sure that it adheres and then all you do is peel off this making sure it all comes with it there we are um, and then I just try and line this up as best as possible I'll use to try and get this on really straight. I don't know whether you're gonna see me in this shot, but. There we go. So just press that down and then use the tool again to make sure that it adheres to the front cover as best as you can. And then it's just a case of peeling it off. So I just try to use this at the start to get a bit of purchase on it and then use my fingers. And then that should just peel off really nicely. So all of our envelopes are ready and now it's just time to hole punch. Okay guys, so this is the hole punch that I use. I'm yet to find a really good one, to be honest. This one's broken. So if you do buy a binder from me, you'll notice that the bottom holes are a little bit further in than I would like them to be. I just can't find a good hole punch. If anyone's got any tips, please tell me. But honestly, they're an absolute nightmare. Um, so yeah, so all we need to do now is basically hole punch yep, uh, each of our envelopes. Okay 
guys, thank you for sticking with me, with me. So all that remains now is for us to assemble our tracker. So I have my binder clips here. I've got the front cover on there and then the tracker and then the back cover. Okay, and so let's get on and assemble. remains now is to put our treasury tags on here and as you can see quite a lot of work <clears throat> goes into making each and every one of these so if you've watched this and thought do you know what I can't be bothered with all that um, feel free to buy one on my Etsy shop um, there's a link down below and I do ship worldwide. So there's our 1K savings challenge binder all done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you found this little tutorial useful and enjoyable to watch. Um, if you don't already subscribe to me, please um, consider doing so. It really, really means a lot to me. And if you've liked this video, please like, please leave us a comment, any hints and tips, anything I could be doing differently. I would really appreciate it. Um, and so until the next one, bye.